in front, Abby. Hello. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Let's see if I can adjust this. Just a little bit. Is that better? No, that's worse. Sorry. Good morning, everybody. My name is Whitney Nicely. For those of you that haven't joined us before, I am the broker with Whitney Buys Houses, and we're in Tennessee and Georgia. And I spent last weekend in Florida and found some apartments while I was there and felt like a ding dong because I don't have my Florida real estate license. So maybe next year we'll be in Florida too. But anyway, right now Whitney buys houses in Tennessee and uh, Georgia. Uh, I'm also an auctioneer, real estate auctioneer. So I talk a little bit about auctions sometimes, but not today. Today is all about land contracts and what that is and what you do with a land contract. So let's just jump right in. Um, in Tennessee, you can have land contracts, and for this house, I put a picture of this house up on Instagram this morning. It's uh, at Whitney Buys Houses on Instagram if you don't follow me, and it's a five-bedroom, two-and-a-half brick house in Jefferson City, Tennessee. Um, there's two other houses for sale in the neighborhood. They're 129. I'm 125. So I'm a little bit under that. I'm also offering a rent to own or a lease option so people don't have to go out and get a mortgage of, uh, immediately. They can put some money down, move in, live in it, love it, rebuild their credit, establish their job history, do whatever they need to, and then get a mortgage in a year or two. Okay, so what I did is this lady owes like 105000 on the house, right? And that's all in, all done. That's her mortgage. She owes on her heat pump, and she owes something else. But all in, all done, she owes 105. So I've agreed to give her 105 in three years. In the meantime, I am making her payments. I'm responsible for all the repairs and maintenance for the house, and taxes and insurance are included in my payment because I didn't know how important that was until the tax bill came this year, and I was like, great. I have all these houses to pay the taxes on. So, it's very important that you negotiate taxes and insurance into your payment. Um, so, a land contract comes with a promissory note. And the land contract says that I'm buying the house for this much. I have X amount of time to get it paid for. Um, I'm basically... I have the rights just like the seller would have. I can go in and remodel it. I can paint it. I can add bedrooms, take away bedrooms. It has a carport. I can make it a garage if I want to. So it is basically my house. I control the house now. And the promissory note says that I owe you this much money. I am paying you this much money per month. If I don't, then you can call the whole note due or kick me out of the house. And I lose all the money that I have invested in it. And you want to go file that with a local county so that the seller doesn't sell it out from under you. If you have this contract and it's all well and good and six months tick by and somebody comes by and tells this woman that she'll give her 125 if she'll cut me out, then there's a chance that she could and I don't have as much repercussions as if I have it filed with the local county and the local county, it's on notice so that when a title company goes to pull the title, they see that there's a cloud on it because I have the first right to buy the house. I am in line to buy the house. You can't sell it out unless you go through me. So that's why it's very, very important that you file that land contract and promissory note with the local county. Any, whichever local county it is. Um, and it may cost $100. It may cost $200. I don't know because it'll depend on which county you're in, what kind of fees they assess on it. So I can't tell you how much that's going to cost. Um, in Knox County, Tennessee, it's about $100, $150. In Jefferson County, Tennessee, it's $100, $150. But that's on a $100,000 house to a $150,000 house. So it just depends on the house that you're buying. It depends on the county you're buying it in, and it depends on the fee structure that they have. 
but it is very, very important that you protect your interest because if you put $10,000 into this house and you're two years along and somebody buys it out from under you, then you could potentially just lose all $10,000 and those two years that you have invested in the property. So that $100, $150 will pay for itself multiple times. So go ahead and file the paperwork properly. Make sure your attorney is guiding you on how to do that too. And they'll be glad to because they don't want you to get in hot water either because then they got to go protect you. So um, I've got this house and I've got it for 105. My payments are like 900, right at 900-ish. And I have put it out on the market as a rent to own. I have three people with applications in on it right now. And I've had this house for 97 days today, which is entirely too long to have a house. And there must be a reason that it's taken me so long because it usually takes me 45 days or less to find somebody. So this has been entirely too long of a process, but now I have three people with applications in. Uh, the first person needs some serious credit repair and it's gonna take them about three years to get a mortgage. Um, they also don't have really enough money to put down, but they can make the monthly payment just fine. I've advertised the monthly payment at $1,000 a month so that I am covered. Um, the next person can get the down payment between five to 10,000, but they're gonna have to give me $1,000 this week, 500 next week, 1,000 the next week, 700 the next week, and blah, 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 blah. And I don't like to string it out like that because I need to be paid up front. You're moving into my rent to own, you got a lease option, that is a premium product that you need to be able to pay for up front. And if you can't, it's not, it's not a regular rental. It's not $1,000 down and $1,000 a month and I'll let you destroy the house. I am looking for people who want to live in this house, buy this house, love this house, and they just have some sort of paperwork issue that they need to work through. That's who I'm looking for. So my third person has the money to put down and he has excellent credit score. He is a small business owner, which y'all, that is incredible. Small business owners are begging for rent to owns because a lot of times they don't actually like get paid. Like their company makes payments, their company is good, but they aren't in a position financially within their company to pay themselves back. More often than not, they're actually putting money into the company to keep it running every so often. So small business owners are perfect for a rent to own. They've got good money to put down. They have you know, a good work ethic. They understand that this house may need some work, that some things may happen, and they're ready for that. They are out of that tenant mentality. They are ready to buy something, and the best way for them to buy something is on a rent to own with somebody that will give them some time. This guy also could buy the house within a year. In fact, it may be in a position, I may be in a position that I ask him not to buy it until a year goes by. And that's because I take title to it now. If I have it for, what is it y'all, 365 days, then it's a long-term investment. So I pay long-term capital gains taxes on my investment. If he buys it in three months, I pay short-term capital gains taxes on it. And I don't know where y'all are, and I don't know what your situation is, but in my mind, I want the long term. So I want him to take that full year. And I tell him that because he's going to have longer to save up money for the down payment because the bank's probably still going to want a down payment. It's going to give him longer to rebuild his credit, which will give him a better interest rate when he goes to get this loan. And it's going to give him longer to show that he's good for the money, that he's got um, the job history, and it may give him longer to fix the house so that it appraises for more. Say he goes in, there's some paneling in the basement in this house, and somebody's gone through and knocked holes in the wall. Not a big deal, totally cosmetic, but if you fix that and paint it so it doesn't look like that 70s show when you walk down there, the house may appraise for more. Or it may be that, you know, everybody, nobody sells their house during the winter. Y'all know that winter is slow in real estate. So 
if he tries to buy it in the winter and there aren't any good comps because nothing's been selling, then it benefits him to stay through summer. So you get the summer comps. So you get those better, higher end, motivated sellers and buyers that you wouldn't have if I told him he had to do it by February the 1st. February the 1st would be an awful time to tell somebody that they have to buy a house because the comps aren't there. So it's a win-win. It's a win for me. I get to keep him longer. I get to, it's a win for him. He gets to fix the house, fix his credit, have longer to do whatever it is he needs to do. And as long as he buys it by next December, then I still get to count it in 2016 sales. I get to count it in 2015 because I'll get this option fee. I get to count it in 2016 because I'm looking for that back end payday. So the sooner I can get that back end payday, the happier I am, right? Unless it's a bigger payday, then maybe I'll go longer. But as far as I'm concerned, if I got the money, I can spend it on what I want. I can buy a house, I can flip a house, I can buy apartments, I can put money down on something, I can just pay my bills. If we're dragging it out longer, then they've got my money. So as soon as I can get it, the sooner I'm happy. And y'all, you know you wanna keep me happy. If Jason's on here, he would say yes, please keep her happy. So, I get a land contract to buy the house. I lease option it out to somebody. I have three years on my land contract. I'm giving this guy like 14 to 18 months to buy it. That way, if something happens and he doesn't buy it, I can either renegotiate. Exactly, I love my Goyard bag. Yay! Thanks. Hey, hey babe. Good morning. Um, so I give him a year to a year and a half to buy it. That way, if something happens, I can either renegotiate and get more money from him, or maybe he leaves and I have somebody else that'll take the house and they can buy it in a year, and I'm still in under my three-year contract. Because y'all remember, if you have three years to get rid of it, you have to get rid of it in three years, or the seller will come back and say, nope, I'm done, you're gone, forget it, I wanna sell it immediately. Um, in my experience, they've been more than willing to say, okay, you can put more money down and take it again because usually the people that I find just don't want their monthly payment. This house has been a headache and they don't want it anymore. So whatever I can do to get rid of their pain, do whatever you want to it. And after a year or two or three, they're used to me, they know I'm good for it, they'll work with you a little bit more than somebody who just wants a three month listing and then they're done, they're shopping for another realtor. So, um, that was a lot. I've got three people and I would like for y'all to tell me if you think I should take person A that cannot come up with the money um, and it's going to take three years to get financed. Person B who is going to make a lump sum every week for the next three or four or five weeks. Or C, the person that has the money and is going to be financed in a year. Yeah, the small business owner, person C, exactly. Okay, so this is real life, y'all. This is today. This is what I'm going with. Y'all can see how easy it is to pick. Now, if I don't, say I don't have C. If I don't have C, I need to look at A and B harder, right? I need to see, well, this guy could hawk his truck or take it to the title loan and get the money and give it to me by Friday. Or... And, you know, he's good for the payments and he'll fix it and all that jazz, but it's still going to take him three years. Person B could make these lump sums every week for the next three, four, five, six weeks, however long it takes, make the monthly payment, and I think she can qualify in, like, two years. You could ask him to put more money down, exactly. That'd be a good way to fix the toss-up. Um, but I agree. I think B, if we don't have C, if something happens to C, we go with B. And we go with B mostly on the mortgage side. It may be more of a headache to get this lump sum down up front, but if she can qualify for the mortgage in two years, then I'm safer in my land contract, right? Like that makes sense to y'all, right? So this is how this is how the process works. This is how about every house I do works. Usually it happens a lot sooner, and I'm telling y'all the Lord works in wonderful ways, and as soon as I get that first application, then it's like a landfall. It's just like boom, 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 the rest of the applications come in. Very rarely do I have, yeah, my seller knows that I'm not buying it, that, that they're taking it, 
and there's no real risk on them because we have this land contract and promissory note filed with the county, then everything's taken care of. It's all worked out in the paperwork ahead of time. So, if something happens to C, we're going with B. Wait, C, B? No, that's D. B. C and then B. Um, unless A comes up with $10,000, then we're going to have to renegotiate everything. So, that's what I want you to focus on. Find those sellers that are willing to do an owner finance. And I do not have an ebook or anything on this topic. Um, the profit in it for me is the $6,000 i am getting in the option fee, which does not go towards the purchase price because there's a premium to be paid to get a rent to own or lease option house. And then I'm selling it for $124,900. So there's about $20,000 on the back end for me. Uh, there's $100 a month, which is going to be what $1,200. So, yeah, But it's something. Um, so all in, all total, I'm, you know, twenty six, twenty seven thousand, and it's stretched out, stretched out over a year. So if I had one of those landing every month where I was, you know, selling one and getting twenty thousand, and selling one and getting twenty thousand, that's great. But you got to remember that you got to do those lease option chunks too up front. You got to keep one coming in and one going out, so that in a year or two you still have a rhythm of stuff coming and going. It's you know, like having six or seven different balls up in the air, you got to keep them all going all the time or something falls off a month and you don't get a ten or $20,000 payday. Um, so wholesaling, I understand, is awesome because no lease options and land contracts are not the same thing. Um, if they don't pay, you just evict them. I, with the land contract, I take, I, I, I am like an owner. So my seller would have to foreclose on me to get me gone. I just have to evict my tenant. So there's a difference in the way the paperwork works in this. Um, and you gotta make sure, if like I'll take a lease option from a seller so that they just have to evict me. It just depends on the situation. Um, on this one though, this is a subject to deal where I'm basically taking over their mortgage and giving it to somebody else. Wholesaling is great because you can make five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars in a month, but then you got to go do it again next month. If I do these lease options and I make, you know, five or ten thousand a month, then in a year or two, I'm also looking at five, ten, twenty thousand dollars. So, and a hundred dollars a month, but if I've got twenty out and I'm making a hundred dollars on twenty, that's two thousand dollars a month that I'm making off of the work that I've already put in. I usually don't tell the lender because the lender just wants the payment and the lender could call the whole note due but most lenders are very happy getting their payment and not having any late payments not having any fees not getting any more houses most lenders do not want houses they want payments they want to be paid they've got plenty of foreclosures to deal with they don't want another one and a lot of times this is a great way for the seller to save their credit because they're not going to file foreclosure. They don't have to make this payment anymore. Their credit is safe. Their investment is safe. They may not get to... I do pay the lender direct because I've got, what, 14 houses right now? Could you imagine the headaches I would have sending out 14 checks to 14 different people hoping and praying that they deposit it on time, that they send their payment on time, that they don't rack up any late fees, and that they don't go to Cherokee or Vegas on the money that I send them? I send the payment to the bank. To the bank because it's, it's just so much easier for me. Um, if the note is called due, I would call the bank and say, look, it's cool, we got this handled, I'll keep sending you the payments, keep working with me, and they're usually happy. They're usually happy. I have not had one come due on me. Um, I had one, <sighs> my seller was in California, I don't remember what the bank was, but um, I was supposed to make the payment in July, so he didn't make June's payment for some reason. And so he was behind June and July by that point, and they came out and put a note on the door that said that they're taking the house back. 
So I called him. He put the money that he owed back down because I don't know how that w didn't work in his head. But he put the money back down, and we're good to go now. He caught it back up, sent me the paperwork. Um, just, yes, you secure your investment, your time, your effort, your everything by just paying the lender. Pay the bank. Send the money to the bank. You know you're happy in your heart that it's good. And it also gives you some credit with the seller so that they can log into their account and say, Dang, she really did pay it. Yeah, she paid it on time too. I never have to worry about my late fees because I just set it up automatically with my bank that it goes out 26th or 7th of the month and applies directly to their loan. Make sure you put the loan number on the memo line of the check. And set it up so that you don't have to write a bunch of checks every month and mail them. Set it up with your bank to figure it out to let them do it. Use the technology when it's good, but don't count on it. Double check it. Make sure on the 28th, that you can see all those checks went out. All right, I'm done here, 22 minutes. Abby's ready to come back in and we got work to do. I am getting married next Saturday. I will have another Periscope next Wednesday. I don't promise to have my full real estate brain with me, but I promise to be here. <laughs> um, I probably will not do anything while I'm on my honeymoon and I'm sure y'all can understand we're going to Hawaii and I am so excited to go see what Hawaii has to offer because I've never been there. Um, we were in Florida for my bachelorette party this weekend which was a blast. We swam with manatees and that was a really cool experience if you want to do something like once in a lifetime kind of experience. Go swim with the manatees because they're endangered and by the time you're 50, 60, 70, you may not be able to swim with them anymore. They may not be on the earth anymore. But right now, you can go, you can swim with them, and you can touch them. And they're awesome. Um, if y'all have any questions, you can email me, info at WhitneyNicely.com. Uh, my website is WhitneyBuysHouses.com. And I'm trying to get a new one launched tomorrow. So uh, if, if I do, I'll put it up on Instagram and Facebook, Whitney Buys Houses and Whitney Nicely. And you can log on, see if you like it better. Go look at the old one today so that if I put a new one up tomorrow, you'll be able to say, oh yeah, it's so much better. It was definitely worth that thousands of dollars of investment that I've spent on a new website, right? Um, if you have any questions though, send me an email, check me out, Facebook, Instagram, and I think that's all I got. Thanks a bunch, y'all. You have a good day. I'll take you out here. Look at Abby while I try to figure out how to close this.